So we've gotten all the cushions out of here. So it's time to start kind of disassembling, ready, getting ready for paint and flooring and stuff like that. So what we're doing is maybe a little bit of a hack. We're using the blue painter's tape, which is gonna be your best friend uh, for all the edging and stuff like that. What we're gonna do is put a little piece on each door that we're gonna take off and number them. So as we work on them, we can take it off and kind of cut, number code it and we'll take pictures of the areas so we know which number door goes where. Just because by the time we take it all, all off, I want to make sure it all goes back where it fits and we don't, we're not chasing down hardware and stuff like that. We also have, somewhere around here, uh, Ziploc baggies that we'll use for, for um, hardware, for the screws and stuff like that. And we'll tape using this onto the back of the door for each of the pieces of hardware so that way we don't lose track of it. So with those two things, should make sure that when it's time to reassemble, it should be pretty easy. So we just got the fire extinguisher. We took it out, same thing, taped the hardware to it. We took the whole bracket out. I'm assuming that the, hard, that the fire extinguisher is bad, just like everything else has been. So just for peace of mind, and I'm not even 100% sure how to look up whether or not it's bad. Either way, gonna replace it, um, so we'll get into that, but take it out, allow us to paint around it, hold onto the hardware just in case we're gonna reuse the bracket, but I imagine we're not. So as you can see, it's a bit of a war zone in here. Um, finally started actually breaking it down. So next step is probably to get everything cleaned up so we can get ready for the floor and the paint and all that kind of stuff. Um, we're gonna grab all of this stuff and uh, take it home with us so we can get painting and stuff like that. We can paint different colors and samples and see what we like and how it sticks and everything like that. And we'll keep you obviously updated on that progress. Otherwise, finally making some interior progress and we're really excited about it. next portion we actually had a lot of trouble with the audio so I'll do a voiceover this is Morgan though isn't she cute what she's telling you is we use two different buckets one with clean water and one with two catfuls of wool light now the interior of the canvas is not treated so we have to be extra gentle which is why we're using the wool light Yep, it's me doing a voiceover for myself, but just pointing out that along this track is a lot of dirt and bugs and stuff like that that you don't want falling over your freshly painted or freshly cleaned camper. So we have this kind of air gun that we use for car detailing, but if you go to any Home Depot kind of place, they'll have a can of compressed air. You can use that to blow it out and then just give it a good wipe and it'll be clean. Like I said, you want to make sure that it's clean because that way when you find it later, you don't want it falling over your freshly cleaned camper. So after a handful of hours of disassembling, cleaning surfaces, cleaning the canvas, cleaning the floor, we're ready to get taping and painting. Everything's taped off now. The one thing I want to make sure to caution you of is because we are going to be replacing the floor, we don't really need to worry so much about splatter on the floor. Um, we, we put down some taping so we, we, that way we don't have to, it's not wet, we don't have to deal with it. But if you're not going to be replacing your flooring, you're going to want to make sure to put down a drop cloth and make sure to tape well because you don't want to be dealing with that after the paint dries. So we want to make sure to emphasize that you want to get everything nice and clean. Everything is clean in here. Obviously there's some stuff around, but no dirt, no grime and stuff like that really important because anything that ends up flying into the base coat or into the primer is going to show up in the paint later. So apparently this brand of primer, they are uh, requiring that we sand anything before we go. We'll see how it turns out. But this was available at our local Ace Lowe's Home Depot kind of a place. Um, we'll give it a try and obviously we'll report back how it goes. But here it goes nothing. It's time to get painted. A couple pieces of advice when it comes to primer. First of all, it's not important that you get a really nice deep coat like you would want a final coat of paint. It's really about the paint being able to adhere and also hoping that we don't see the wood behind after our first coat of actual paint. You can see here that we did a really good job with both a brush and a 4 inch roller that was foam and designed specifically for cabinets and counters. 
And after that, we did a nice little sand job to make it a nice smooth surface so that the brush strokes and stuff like that didn't show up. Morgan selected this gorgeous blue. It's gonna really brighten everything up. We got it from Valspar, and it's the cabinet and furniture semi-gloss. Does a really good job of covering, but just like that first coat of primer, it's not important that this is absolutely perfect. You wanna get good coverage and make sure it's nice and smooth, but again, we used both that four inch foam roller and a brush to touch it up. Just getting back to the camper after an overnight dry. One thing that is very apparent at this point is I would bet money against one more coat being enough. Um, as you'll see there, you know, it's, it looks kind of like more like a primer than it was like a, you know, really a good overcoat. So I'm imagining it's gonna be another two and we're gonna give it lots of time to dry between the two. Um, Morgan's doing some sanding right now just to even everything out to make sure that there's no, you know, clumps and stuff like that from the first coat. Um, two th a couple things that are gonna be super helpful if you're tackling a job like this, first of all, gloves make sure you're wearing them i can't i can't tell you how many pairs of gloves we've already gone through and to get this stuff all over your hands it's a lot easier to take off the gloves for sure um i happen to have ruined one of my favorite shirts because it's just it snowballs so you're like oh i'm just gonna go and i'll i'll tape a couple things and you're like oh well, i got the, i got the paint so let's just get on so wear clothes that you're gonna be comfortable losing because you're probably gonna stain it um also we're using primarily these four inch rollers um they're specifically made for cabinets and doors it's a nice even kind of smooth surface. Um, it's, it's more of a foam pad than like a, one of the microfiber pads for sure. Four inch, it just gives us plenty. We really don't need anything bigger because of how small the surface is. And this morning we picked up one of these cute, tiny little three inch. Um, it's just gonna allow us to get in the areas. We noticed that the areas that we're having to hit with a paintbrush are just certainly not going to be as smooth and even. So this is gonna allow us to get into the areas that are really difficult to reach, which by the way, are difficult to reach. So places like, you know, behind this little bar here, um, you can see that we actually have the galley propped up on one of these empty jugs here. That's gonna allow us to kind of get in the areas that are kind of blocked off by the pipes and stuff like that. So just give yourself some time. The, definitely it's prep, 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 prep. The more that you put into it, the easier it's gonna be. Um, and also make sure that if, you know, I know it's a pandemic, it's impossible to find Clorox wipes. If you can find anything wipes, even baby wipes, just to have around because you're gonna get things with paint on them that you don't necessarily want to. And if you can quickly wipe them off, it's gonna save yourself a lot of trouble in the future. So we're gonna get this second coat of paint on, wish us luck and let's get to work. Oh, so um, we are in the middle of doing our final coat now. And uh, so it's gonna end up being a total of three coats. We got, uh, what is it, a gallon? How big is that thing? A gallon of paint and it's twice as big as we need. Um, I'll give you a couple suggestions on ways to remember what color paint you used. But otherwise, um, right, as soon as we get that last coat on and we're confident that it's gonna be done, we're gonna go ahead and pull the, the painter's tape off while it's still wet. Um, we want to make sure that we have something to wipe, like a Clorox wipe or something like that, as we're pulling it off because it's probably going to be messy. Um, but we don't want to wait till it, it dries because then it'll be stuck to it. So let's check that out. One thing I forgot to mention that's definitely a must have would be a razor blade and a plastic razor blade. Either one of those are very inexpensive and it will help cut away and pull away anything that gets stuck on the sides. So to kind of wrap it up, it really wasn't bad. Um, each coat of paint took us probably 45 minutes or an hour, gave a few hours between each one. So we got the whole thing done in a weekend. Um, definitely the cleaning was the most arduous part. Taping wasn't fun either. But overall, for such a big impact, I think it was an absolute no brainer. You can obviously get way crazier if you want, like disassembling the cabinetry and pulling everything out. But for what we're trying to do and you know, kind of a, kind of a sub $3,000 pop-up, doesn't make a lot of sense for us to invest too much into redoing it. 
Um, but we're just trying to make it ours, make it something where it doesn't feel so dated and something feel where we can be happy to spend our time and uh, you know just completely opposite from the style that we have at home. Just a reminder, if you are not planning to redo your floors, make sure you do a much better job than we did at protecting them before you paint. There's a whole lot to do and only a week and a half or so left before we take off for California. So there's a lot to still update you guys on. If you want to keep up to date with our adventures or even our cross country trip, make sure to hit the subscribe button on the bottom here. Uh, you'll follow to our YouTube page or if you're watching this on Facebook, make sure you've given us a like there. Thanks a lot and from uh, Chased Adventures, we'll see you guys soon.